Hello students, this is Molecular Basis of Inheritance Part 1. This is our second lesson uh, which we are going to start. We have finished earlier uh, inheritance and variation lesson. So uh, before starting today's session, I want to inform you that uh, you have to check the link in the comment box. Uh, I have provided you uh, multiple choice questions in that. Uh, which we have studied in the earlier session that complete lesson so I have provided you the uh, multiple choice questions in it, in that so if you have any query regarding any uh, any question like a small answer question or large answer question which is provided in your exercise you can write it uh, in the comment box so that I can help you to clear your uh, doubts okay so uh, let's uh, begin with the molecular basis of inheritance part one so the topics which we are going to cover in this session or in this lesson are Introduction, DNA as genetic material, Griffith's experiment, Avery McCarty and McLeod experiment, Hershey and Chase experiment, DNA packaging in prokaryotes and DNA packaging in eukaryotes, uh, DNA replication, protein synthesis, genetic code, operon concept, human genome project and DNA fingerprinting. So before starting the structure of DNA, the study of structure of DNA and all the processes which are related to the DNA structure and all, uh, it's very important that we must understand who were the scientists who have discovered the DNA structure. So these are the two images. This is uh, James Watson and uh, Crick, okay, Watson and Crick who got Nobel Prize for the DNA structure and she is Rosalind Franklin. So let's have a look who were the uh, James uh, Watson and Crick, okay. So the discovery in 1953 of the double helix and they discovered this is the twisted ladder like structure it is the twisted ladder structure of the dna that is deoxyribonucleic acid and it was done by these two scientists james watson and francis crick marked the they marked a milestone in the history of science and gave rise to modern molecular biology so their contribution is too high and they got nobel prize for their uh, this uh, structure okay and uh, Another scientist is uh, Rosalind Franklin. So she, Rosalind Franklin is also known as the dark lady of DNA. Um, so who was she? She was born in 1920 and she died at the age of 37 because of the ovarian cancer so earlier. But her discoveries are, you know, just like the milestones. So, she was an English chemist and X-ray crystallographer who work was, uh, whose work was central to the, uh, to the understanding of the molecular structures of DNA that is deoxyribose nucleic acid and RNA that is ribonucleic acid, viruses, coal and graphite. So although her works on coal and viruses were appreciated in her lifetime, her contributions to the discovery of the structure of DNA were largely recognized uh, later on okay so she is actually the main uh, discoverer of the DNA structure uh, she gave the x-ray crystallographic method or image of the DNA okay and uh, uh, by studying her paperwork when she died Nobel uh, Prize winners Watson and Crick they used her data and they uh, later on propose this ma model that is the uh, twisted ladder structure of the DNA. So this is all about the James Watson, Francis Crick and the Rosalind Franklin. So in this slide we are going to talk about the structure of DNA, the chemical components of the nucleic acids, uh, chemical components of which the DNA is actually made up of. And before going to that, we must uh, try to understand, actually you have studied this 
part the structure of dna all its chemical components and all this part you have studied in your 11th standard but i'm trying to give you a revision to this part because uh, you are having the semi conservative replication and all the you know uh, prokaryotic eukaryotic structures and it's going to be too much complicated so i thought it, this is the best way to understand this uh, dna part if you know the basic uh, concepts if you are having a very clear then it becomes very easy to understand the dna okay so let's begin with the fidrich uh, fidrich mixture uh, who separated the cellular substance in 1869 the scientist from the nuclei of the first cells and he termed them as nuclein okay so what he did he collected the samples from the pus cells and he collected that material that part pus and he termed it as nuclein subsequent studies showed that this material has acidic properties whatever he collected the cellular substance from the uh, you know uh, from the pus cells so that it was later on uh, discovered or known that it, it it was having acidic properties and hence it was renamed or retermed as the nucleic acid so because of that it is known as deoxyribose nucleic acid that is dna and ribonucleic acid which is rna so these are the two major types of the nucleic acids uh, which are found to be present in the cells so the chemical components of the nucleic acids while talking about that uh, nucleotides they are uh, the structural units of nucleic acids whether you are talking about dna or rna the nucleotides they are the basic components which are present there so each nucleotide has three components okay nucleotides are the structural unit of the nucleic acid so all the nucleic acids they are made up of these uh, uh, chemical components that is nucleotides and these nucleotides they again are having three components okay so these are the uh, components of nucleotides sugar phosphate group and nitrogen base so you are having this fine diagram this is the structure of a nucleotide where this is a phosphate group this is a sugar and this is a nitrogen base that is ATGC you know it that is ad adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine okay and this is a 5 carbon sugar okay so these nitrogen bases they are termed as adenine that is A it is denoted by A, thymine that is capital T, cytosine that is capital C guanine capital g and uracil that is u capital u so uracil is absent in the dna and it is present in the rna so before going to that part we must understand each and every chemical component in detail uh, what is sugar sugar it is now this is a sugar okay so sugar it is a pentose sugar okay so if you count the number see one two three four and five so what these numbers are these are the numbers which are denoting the carbons which are present in the sugar okay so the sugar is a pentose sugar sugar pentose means five five carbon com, uh, containing sugar so uh, it is a pentose sugar called deoxyribose or ribose it is a five carbon compound and has a pentagonal ring structure so this is known as a pentagonal ring so it's very easy five carbon compounds and penta means five pentagonal ring so that's all about sugar another part is the phosphate group now this is the pink colored part this is known as second component of nucleotide that is phosphate group now it is actually a phosphoric acid phosphate group is actually a phosphoric acid it has three active OH that is hydroxyl groups which uh, of which two are involved in the strand formation so when there is strand formation so out of these hydroxyl groups two are involved in the strand formation another component last is the nitrogen bases what are nitrogen bases now these are the nitrogen bases so they vary a t the nitrogen base is either adenine or thiamine or guanine or cytosine 
any one nitrogen base is situated or present in one nucleotide okay or uh, not all the four uh, nitrogen bases are present at a time okay try to understand that if you are going to study that part in uh, the next slide you will come you will understand it better okay so what are these nitrogen bases now these are the cyclic components atgc that is uh, these are the nitrogen bases. So these are the uh, nitrogen bases. Uh, these are cyclic compounds uh, uh, made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen atoms. So they compose. They are composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen atoms. The bases are named as adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil. So they are again classified into two groups: purines and pyrimidines. Okay. So adenine, uh, guanine, these are double ring compounds. They are known as purines. So A and G. A, G, these are the double ring compounds. Adenine and guanine, they are double ring compounds and they are also called as purines. Whereas thymine and cytosine and uracil, these are the single ring components or compounds. So they are referred as pyrimidine. So pyrimidines are single ring and purines are double ring. And the uh, most important thing which you have to remember is the uracil. Uracil is absent in the DNA and it is present only in the RNA that is ribonucleic acid. Uracil is absent in the deoxyribonucleic acid. So these nucleotides they are named according to their nitrogenous base. Uh, a nucleotide containing thiamine is known as a thiamine nucleotide. If that nucleotide contains adenine, then that is known as adenine nucleotide as, and so on. So they are named like that. So the term nucleoside refers to a combination of uh, a pentose sugar and a purine or pyrimidine base. So we'll try to understand this in the form of this equation. Uh, now see, what is a nucleoside? Nucleoside is when there is a pentose sugar plus nitrogen base. When a pentose sugar and nitrogen base is only present, then that is known as a nucleoside. Try to understand that there is a difference between nucleoside and nucleotide. Okay, so when you are talking about the pentose sugar and the nitrogen base, then it forms a nucleoside. When you talk about a pentose sugar, nitrogen base and phosphate now these are the three components which are involved in the nucleotide so that is the basic difference in the nucleoside and nucleotide okay nucleoside contain two components pentose sugar and nitrogen base while nucleotides they contain three components that is pentose sugar nitrogen base and phosphate uh, so nucleotide it is the combination of nucleoside plus phosphate so nucleoside that is Pentose sugar, nitrogen base, that is a nucleoside plus a phosphate forms a nucleotide. So that's all about the structure. See, this structure is very much important if you try to understand, if you understand this, what is a phosphoric acid, how, what, what are the components of sugar, and what are the nitrogen bases, see they, how they are attached. Their attachment is also very important as you know that the DNA strand is anti-parallel. So if you understand this chemical structure, if you read this matter, if you try to understand why this is so, then you will be able to understand that why there are two strands of DNA, they are anti-parallel, why the DNA is negatively charged, why there is 3 dash to 5 dash or 5 dash to 3 dash, these two types of ends are present. Okay, so for that better understanding, it is very essential that you must understand this concepts very beautifully. So that's all about the chemical components of the nucleic acids. So that's all about today's session. Thank you.